Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Moving Forward. I'm your host, Kayla Garza, and with me is Leilani Squires. So today is all about recapping 2013, and we're actually gonna jump in and look at trends um, in the marketplace of women in the year 2013. So let's go ahead and get started. Leilani, you had an interesting article that you found for us. Yeah, um, I'm excited to talk about these two articles. The first one is 10 Findings About Women in the Workplace, and this is done by uh, Pew Research, P-E-W Research. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first, I only took, pulled out two because there are 10, but for the sake of time, and the ones that really <laughs> caught my attention, I would just boil it down to the two. Um, the first one being, today's young women are starting their careers better educated than their male counterparts. Uh, so the graph um, that came with the article shows the percentage of um, 25 to 32 year olds that are starting a career with at least a four year college degree. And currently women are at 38% and men are at 31. Ooh. It's not a huge drastic change, but when you That's compare it to what it was, number. it still is, but when you compare it to what it used to be and how it used to be, um, women were far on the bottom mm -hmm. and still trying to catch up. And um, then somewhere around the 1990s, we were pretty equal. It was uh -huh. very even. And then something happened, and we flipped places, and now women are um, more so than men. So I found that women incredibly interesting. Uh, of course, you don't... T the, this is just the four-year college degree, so it doesn't take into account like trade schools or something like that. Oh, it doesn't. Like okay. Um, so uh, that would be really interesting to study some more. Um, but I was curious how you have seen this stat be a result, even in the workplace. Um, I could definitely agree to it. When I went to school, uh, I definitely saw a lot of women in my classes. And um, I don't know if mine was because it was the type of degree that I was going for. I have a degree in event management. Mm -hmm. Or um, if it was overall a bigger picture. But I definitely could attest to seeing that I noticed it mm -hmm. um, during my school days. Yeah, I could even see it in my general education classes. I mean, it wasn't just for my major, which was professional writing, mm -hmm. um, but also in the gen eds, that there were more women than there were men. And mm -hmm. even for my master's degree, there were more women than yeah. men. It was a bit more equal, I thought. Mm -hmm. I, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but it did seem that there was far more women. And I'm really curious to kind of dive into this topic a bit more of what's causing it Me to too. be. Uh, why is it that we're catching up for the yeah. last time? Or um, what's causing men to feel like they don't need it? Or right. uh, is not as much of a drive right. as it, it, as it used to be? That's the key word right there, I think. So um, it'd be very interesting to see that. We'll have so. to do more research on that, definitely. Yeah. Also coming soon. <laughs> um, the next one is uh, women of all ages, just like men, want to secure job they enjoy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, but they are less likely than men to ask for raises or aspire to top management positions. Um, this is especially true once they reach the 30s and 40s when many men and women face the trade-offs that go with being a working parent. Mm -hmm. um, so I was curious as to your thoughts on why do you think it's harder for women to ask for raises and or aspire to a top management position? I wonder if it's that saying of just be grateful for what you have. You've reached a certain point in your career. You know, you have your husband and your kids and you're at that level and you make plenty of money, hopefully. And you're kind of, you get, you don't have that drive as much. You get kind of complacent hmm. and you're like, why, why shake the boat or whatever the saying is. Um, whereas I think guys... I don't know if they have that drive to eventually be the CEO or what it is, but um, I do think that women are kind of blocking themselves as far as when they get to a certain point and just settling. So it's the, we're content, we're happy, this is a, a consistent, stabilized... Yeah, stable, yeah. ...lifestyle, and we can work with this instead yeah. of moving on to the next... Position. Which, honestly, it's not necessarily a bad thing mm -hmm. because who's to say that a life of a CEO or whatever is for everyone? It's not. It's true. And so some people, they they get to that point and they evaluate their lives and they realize, this is it for me. This is great. Mm -hmm. I've got my kids and they're they're doing well. And 
I don't want to shake things up. Mm -hmm. so. And their job could be pretty fine. I mean, yeah. they, they know it. It's just that steady eddy. Yeah. Um, and I would think, you know, I'm about to enter that 30 realm here. Oh, really? <laughs> and so. so feeling that, okay, this stat is kind of geared towards where I am now. Yeah. And I, I would never want, for me personally, I would never want to just stay kind of, or get to that stagnant place. Mm -hmm. Even if this is as high up in a company as I want to go, mm -hmm. um, it is still, I think it's still a choice of what does fit your personality, mm -hmm. um, what other responsibilities are on your plate. Right. Um, for example, um, some women that I know are doing their jobs where they're doing their full-time job, but they're also like teaching at a college right. or doing something different. Yeah. And so it's filling up, there's other responsibilities or other um, adventures yeah. that they're doing. And sometimes it's the family, and that's really, really important to some women to really be a part of that family and yeah. have that amount of time to be with their kids. Yeah. So it does become a choice, and it does become um, something that is really an intentional choice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine. I think mm -hmm. you, so long as you have... I've mapped out your reasons why. Yeah. And as far as um, you have consciously made the choice and walking into it with your eyes wide open, mm -hmm. then okay. Then it's fine. Yeah. All right. So either keep aspiring or be happy with what you have. Either way, we say it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's totally up to you. Uh, okay. So that's all I had for that article. Um, okay. But again, it's on Pew Research. Um, so just go to the website. And the title again is... 10 findings about women in the workplace. All right, so off to you. Yes, I think mine might be as a result of those women that have gone to the four-year degree colleges, possibly. Um, so a new study reveals that women-owned businesses are growing at a faster rate than most businesses. And here are some of the surprising results from that. As of 2013, it is estimated that there are over 8.6 million women owned businesses in the US alone, mm -hmm. generating over 1.3 trillion in revenues and employing nearly 7.8 million people. That's really impressive. Yeah, so I think this stat and some of the numbers here kind of go against what we've been hearing, mm -hmm. which is women are not um, moving forward or um, having that impact and when you look at an article like this and you focus on the positive right it's like hey you know what we are we are making high numbers and we are having an impact so i thought this was awesome That's really cool. um, the other thing was employment of women-owned firms over the past 16 years exceeds the growth rates of all of the very largest publicly traded corporations hmm. so of those businesses the ones that are women owns are growing at a faster rate as well. That's interesting. So very interesting, exciting numbers. Um, and that brings me to my question, what factors do you think personally are contributing to this growth? Um, I think this generation has been encouraged more, has been more uh, that you can be anything you want to be kind of a thing, yeah, and so. they're raised in that world, and you know, Disney does a really good job of <laughs> encouraging that, parents are doing a better job at encouraging that, uh -huh. schools are doing that, so they're growing up more so, or they, they have grown up more so with that you can do anything that you want, Right. and plus in today's very tech-savvy world, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more opportunity for women to... Um, find opportunities that weren't available before. Exactly. And they can find their niche that is more of what their passion is and they can go for it. Yep. So I think there's there's a lot of factors that go into, but I think that um, awareness, that education of you really can do this mm -hmm. and you don't have to just accept some sort of job that will just pay the bills. You can right. actually do something that you really enjoy. Yeah. Um, plus um, the wide variety of opportunities that are available to women now. So exactly. they are the two that I would pinpoint most. I would 100% have to agree with you. Um, definitely. So this year's report expands its focus to look, or this report that we're looking at here, specifically at the phenomenal growth of firms owned by women of color. Um, so the growth in the number of minorities, uh, women-owned firms, are up over 100% from 1997 to 2013. So major, major growth in the minority sector as well. Um, and then you and I talked about this, but the states in which growth in the number employment and revenues are women-owned firms um, have been the strongest are the District of Columbia, D.C., um, North Dakota, Nevada, Wyoming, and Georgia. Right. So kind of all over the place. 
And from a bird's eye view, it's hard to see a correlation between any of these states, but I thought it was something worth mentioning. It's yeah. interesting. Um, did any of this information surprise you? And what, what do you think our, our viewers can take away from information like this? And some of the topics and some of the articles that we've read together and just on, on our own, it seems that there is still an attitude of women are being repressed. Right, right. <laughs> and not able to do certain things or not allowed to do certain things with business. And seeing stats like this, it's like, okay, this is more <laughs> what I feel. This yeah. is more what I feel as the, or, or see in reality. Right. And some of this attitude of um, we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's very interesting the difference in generational thought. Because mm -hmm. if I talk to my grandmother about this, um, I get a very different story or very different attitude really? than talking to my younger sister who's just graduating from college. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting. And also, um, it's very encouraging. I think it's really cool to see how much it's actually happening. It's not just a trickle effect. It's yeah. quite blooming. Large numbers. And I think it's going to be interesting for, um, at least during our lifetime, to continue watching these cool sort of things happen. Like, I know my age, I'm at the age now where I've grown up um, with a computer my entire right. life. For the most part. So um, to see the generations below me and how that's going to continue to affect them, it's yeah. like, I, I mean, really all I see is positive um, inclination. So good yeah. stuff. I, agree. I love it. I agree. Okay, so the next article I'm bringing to the table for discussion is called Targeting the Market. And it is on womenofinfluence.com, which okay. is a Canadian website. Huh. But it's really interesting stats. And yeah. I think we see very much the similar... Um, uh, stats here in the U.S. I say so. um, and um, this is in their industry trend section. Um, it was really interesting because this article kind of gives an overview starting from the 1940s and 50s, uh, marketing to women, how it was done, and then kind of how it developed over yeah. the certain decades and what it is like today. So like in the four, uh, 1940s and 50s, it was targeting the housewife, and that was pretty much all it was. Right. And it was pretty much the, the harder she works, the more pretty she is. And <laughs> And it was kind of interesting. It's so this. funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got an attitude just reading it. So <laughs> um, that could be a whole other topic. Yeah. Um, so it was really interesting to see how the, the development in marketing trends mm -hmm. has changed to this point in 2013, being more so about meeting the needs, meeting the emotional needs, mm -hmm. and providing resources for women based on what they're what, knowing what they're needing. Okay. Um, and I, I was really struck again reading this article about how complex human beings are. <laughs> and whether they're men or women, it yeah. doesn't matter. But just with the different hobbies and jobs and interests mm -hmm. and obligations and social status or whatever. It's yep. just very, very different. It's all part of the social, mm -hmm. like, yes. hub. <laughs> yeah, but knowing exactly how to target to your target market uh -huh. is very... It takes a lot of homework now. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of deliberate intentionality mm -hmm. and studying them what they think what they feel how they process that information and how they go to get to that point of making a decision right um so it was interesting in this article the t that it was talking about um how some marketing campaigns have done really well lately mm -hmm. because they know what women are needing are are, wa are wanting uh, so this is from the article. For example, in 2004, um, Dove brand broke new ground with its campaign for real beauty. Uh -huh. Did you watch those? Uh -huh. yep. yep, I remember um, a lot of that. Yeah, uh, which expanded the traditional definition of beauty and encouraged women to be comfortable in their own skin. The campaign spoke to women about something that they didn't think they were allowed to talk about, mm -hmm. and it sparked a debate about what real beauty was, mm -hmm. says Sharon McLeod, um, VP of Marketing at um, a university in Canada. Mm -hmm. We were taking a stand that beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, and ages, uh -huh. and ethnicities, and no one had told them that before. Um, so again, it's knowing a deep kind of a deep need mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. Not something that we always talk about. We badmouth about it. Right. Um, but we don't always talk about the positive yeah. aspects of that. Um, so when it comes to this style of marketing, how Dove does this marketing, and they're still doing it, uh -huh. and a lot of other companies are following their example. They are, yeah. How do you personally respond to this style of marketing? I, I love it. I'm for 
completely for that. I think a lot of what they started talking about as far as conversation, we're still, con we're, we're still seeing that conversation. Um, and now it's moved to like the viral video of that girl being photoshopped. Mm -hmm. Yes, it talks or, about that. Yeah, yeah, or like um, celebrities coming out and saying like, hey, you know what? I don't look like that picture that you mm -hmm. guys see. And like, mm -hmm. please don't idolize that because that's not me and that's not real. So I think the more that we can just get real mm -hmm. and um, get away from this idealism and get more of a realism, like I mm -hmm. think more that connection happens, the better um, the better off everyone will be because we'll feel like we're heard and we're understood. Right. And then, um, you know, and the more that the marketing companies and whoever gets that, the better off they'll be as well. Right. So You see this a lot also in vlogs anymore. You uh -huh. see this also, and as a writer writing for different magazines, I see this a lot and, okay, who is, who is it that I'm writing to? Mm -hmm. What are their needs? What take-home value are they able to take right. after reading this? After reading this article of mine, what are they going to walk away from feeling encouraged or right. inspired or educated? What is that? Yeah. And there is a huge emphasis lately on vulnerability. Mm -hmm. The utmost pouring out of your heart, <laughs> honest <laughs> aspect of, of your own personal story or what you've learned or something. Yeah. And so when marketing is starting to address, okay, let's get real here. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting to see how that does impact the choices that we make when it comes to purchasing something. Right. And I think that it also gives us um, a more willingness to trust those companies mm. when they're like, hey, we're, we get you, we're understanding where you're coming from, and we're on your side. That's so. a very good point. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so again, that is, this article is targeting the market, and it's on womenofinfluence.com. So, and you have one final article to I discuss. I do. Mine is a little more deep than that oh. one we just <laughs> touched on there, but um, it's always good to get all sides of the stories. So this one is five innovative trends in women's economic equality. So studies show that investing in women is shown to have a positive effect on society, including be better health, um, better education outcomes, more resilient societies, reinvestment in communities, and mm -hmm. greater overall prosperity, which I didn't know this. I had a feeling. I, I think I had read it maybe here and there, but to see sure. it all like listed out like that, I was like, why are we not investing in women <laughs> more? So um, there has been overall progress globally, um, but women in the Middle East and North Africa still mm -hmm. face some of the greatest barriers in asserting their economic rights. Everyone is pretty aware of that. Um, so this company called the Osho Ashoka <laughs> Change Makers and General Electric, which we're all familiar with, launched an online competition to support innovations by women. Mm -hmm. So the competition is also in the series of it unfolding. It's uncovering a series of trends that demonstrate how investing in women's economic equality is, in fact, a smart idea. Duh. <laughs> the competition, um, I'll give you a brief, brief overview of what it is. Sure. So they received applications from more than 23 countries, and I think it was nice. over 100 um, applicants. Um, these women came from div diverse economic, social, and uh, political backgrounds. So we're going to talk about some of the trends that they found through launching this uh, this competition and what they're seeing for 2013 and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Trend number one, um, reinvent jobs for maximum flexibility. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has been talked about in the U.S. A lot. So it's interesting that it's actually yeah. globally a thing. Very good. Um, so the story was when Maria Umar was refused maternity leave as a teacher, she quit her job and worked to found an online company that would offer flexibility and work options and uh, for any women who needs it. And so that's the trend that's, that's coming about is creating project-based jobs that women can easily access online. And a key part of their success is customizing their services to meet the unique needs of their local people right. that are applying. Right. Um, so what else did it say? So the other thing they do are securing partnerships with local companies to ensure quality jobs are available for posting. Um, the ratings, as far as employees being able to rate their company, that type of thing is becoming available more and more. Mm -hmm. And for employees to build their reputation. 
So all tying back into having that flexibility as mm -hmm. as part of as part of your job. Mm -hmm. And I think you would agree, definitely. Yeah, and I I've um, had a lot of discussions with some friends lately about how. Um, their jobs are turning far more flexible as mm -hmm. more project-based than hourly. Yep. You know, you're supposed to be here from 8 to 5, and yep. that's that. Um, and they're finding, so the businesses that my friends are working for are finding it to be far more productive yep. than being very rigid with the work hours. So yeah. it would be very interesting to see how this trend, not only in the U.S., but globally, globally yep. starts working. But, I mean, we have... A, a member of my team works from Oregon uh -huh. and yeah. trying to keep in contact with her is becoming so much more easier because yeah. we have our cell phones, we have text messaging, we have email, we have Skype, all of these opportunities. Um, we use Basecamp here at Paper yep. Media and so it's very easy for her to get those notifications of what tasks have been assigned to her exactly. without having to send a text message or call every time I need, need right. to do something. So. Those types of opportunities have really benefited companies, and it's not necessary all the time. Yeah. I will say, though, there are some places I have worked for where it is necessary that you're in the that office. That you're there. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so, it, yeah, it was very interesting. It doesn't work for every business, but there are opportunities that you can do that. Definitely. So. And uh, I think that it makes you as an employee feel valued because trusted. you know that you're trusted and that you can... You can get the job done without necessarily having to be here. So um, a great trend, definitely. Trend number two is partner for entrepreneurial success and create access to market. So what does that mean? Yes, um, <laughs> a lot of words there. Yes. So it's basically helping women to establish their own, or a lot of the change makers out there are helping women to establish their own micro enterprises and providing them with the services and partnerships they need to grow into those large size businesses. So basically, the smaller businesses are getting help from outside sources to, to add to the statistics that we spoke about earlier to move into that large size business. Um, and how are they doing this? They're delivering skills, training sessions, providing startup materials, coupling um, skill trainings with consulting advice. Very good and um, just making the connection of linking women to distributors and networks to ensure that their products can reach enough customers to eventually make a profit. Very good. So there seems to be a huge trend of just people helping women in general. Mm -hmm. I think everyone wants to see us move forward and progress, and globally there's a lot that points to people are helping one another, so it's great. It's all about networking. Yep. Trend number three, replace intense stigma with empowerment. This one was kind of interesting. So what this does, it focuses on breaking the cycle of poverty and stigma faced by women who are imprisoned with uh, maybe a lot of children or have a lot of debt. Just the mm -hmm. stigmatisms that go with people um, of a lower class society. Okay. And so what it does there for them is provides vocational training and support and creates an overall public campaign okay. to help ensure that women can break free of any stigma and become gainfully employed. Awesome. And personally, I know of a company um, or an organization called um, Dress for Success here mm -hmm. locally that does things like this. It, it provides you with um, clothes that you need to attend your first interview. That's awesome. And, um, yeah, other things like that. But so... Have you seen anything going on as far as a trend with any of those? Uh, it's kind of related. Uh, there are several places, um, one here locally that I do some volunteer work for, um, called Hither and Yon, um, where they have a little furniture place in the back of a store, Aww. and um, all the proceeds go towards um, providing financial um, way for people in or for high schoolers uh -huh. in Africa to finish their education awesome. and there's also it also proceeds go to another ministry here um, for teenage moms That's so awesome. that they can finish their education as well yeah. um, so I see that one there's also one that a friend of mine she has just done some modeling for this oh. clothing place hey. um, <laughs> and she has it's called elegant tees okay and it's a store a clothing line that is put together by women that have been rescued from sex trafficking so it's given okay. them that um that fulfillment that uh -huh. purpose and that employment after they've been that rescued. is awesome so, 
Yeah, I think that we are seeing a lot of this, and I really hope that it's something that continues to happen. Absolutely. It can only mean good things for society. Mm -hmm. Those were mainly the ones that I wanted to talk about today. That's great. And, um... I love that these are what they're wanting to do, and in some ways, we've already been doing it. So, uh -huh. we, so what's encouraging is that from our perspective here in the U.S. is that we see the success already. Uh -huh. And so through this competition, they're saying we want to incorporate this trend here as well. And, and get these really, people involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so to see that becoming more global will be really great to see yep. as time moves on. I feel like finally we're finally harnessing the power of the Internet mm -hmm. and finally connecting on a good in a good way that we're supposed to be. So a lot of good things to look forward to for 2014. Um, you can catch me on Twitter at Thought Kebabs. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on trends that you're seeing. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you thought that we didn't talk longer about something and you want more information. But um, make sure and comment and speak with us. And Leilani? Yes, I'm on Leilani SQ on Twitter, so feel free to contact me there or through Paper Media. I'd love to get emails. And so this, moving forward, is part of Asalcha, which is a resource that Paper Media is putting together for small to medium businesses. Uh, so check it out, and we love to hear, hear feedback from you. Thanks, guys. See you next week.